I am Julia Watson and I've just written a book called Low Tech. Low Tech is about traditional ecological knowledge and it describes the way Indigenous people understand their environments. And then more deeply the technologies that they build to either feed themselves, clean their water, really basic construction to make life easy in the developing world. The project began as a book seven years ago that didn't look at Indigenous communities and their knowledge as this romantic other, but looked really seriously through the lens of an architect. The book was really about looking back to knowledge that's out there in the world and in a way repackaging it and bringing it back into our contemporary view. All these systems are under, at the moment, some type of threat, even though they're the most biodiverse, nature-based technologies that we have. So I visited the Kasi about four years ago and got to walk the living root bridges and photograph them. The living root bridges are bridges that are grown across the rivers. It was developed to allow people to walk when the forests were flooded from the monsoon rains. So the Madan live in the Mesopotamian marshes. They've literally been building island technologies that last for 20 years and have based a whole civilization that lives on islands and marshes. The Bengalese are the people that live in the city of Calcutta. They're constructing a sewage wastewater treatment system that doesn't need any machinery, doesn't need any energy, doesn't need any chemicals, but then produces food, produces clean water, and produces a culture and economy for that particular community that oversees the running of that sewage treatment system. It was this moment where I realized that there's people working in these locations who really understand their incredible benefit to the world, but they just don't have the platform on a larger scale to be able to champion their causes. And so that's what I really think the book is about, is to bring all this knowledge to a much larger audience. Technology can be different. Technology can just use nature and the systems that nature is composed of to do things for us like clean sewage, to provide drinking water. That's architecture that is beautiful and emblematic of a particular place. We can be informed of how to look better through the way that we build our environments, whether they're urban or rural. Low Tech is dedicated to the next seven generations, which means the next 150 years, and that's typically how Indigenous communities think. There's deep knowledge and planning. They'll have an impact in the next 150 years, so we need to be making decisions within consideration of our children, our children's children, and so on. What I would like to see from the next 150 years is that somebody in the future would pick up this book and flip through the pages and see these images as something that's really old but that they understand it because they live in a world conceived from it. That's my vision for the book and that's my vision for the future.